Welcome to Take Your LinkedIn Profile to All-Star Status. My name is Gloria Coe, class of 2006, and I serve as Senior Director for Alumni Career Engagement at UCLA Alumni Affairs. We're excited to have you here for this workshop with career coach and Bruin, Emily Taylor. Today's program will share LinkedIn strategies taught at the top business schools, as well as plenty of profile hacks to stand out from the crowd. We encourage you to actively work on your LinkedIn profile during the presentation to make real-time improvements. I wanted to take the opportunity to thank our Alumni Association sustaining donors. It's with your help that we are able to strengthen the Bruin community with career programs like this. Now to start our program. I'm excited to introduce Emily Taylor. She received her MBA from UCLA Anderson in 2008 and is the founder and head career coach at Next Step Careers, and she'll be our guide in this program. She previously taught career management to 2,500 MBAs at UCLA Anderson and was a vice president of talent at a high growth ed tech startup. I'll turn it over to Emily to lead us through this program. Welcome, Emily. Thank you so much, Gloria. And it's great to be with all of you. I think we have over 200 uh, UCLA alums that are joining us here today. Um, and it looks like um, too that um, everybody's kind of at different stages uh, between networking and job searching. So um, this session will be um, helpful to all of you. Um, I did um, check out and let me pull up my first slides. So I was making a few changes right beforehand. Um, um, just um, so one of the um, I just wanted to make sure that uh, just to, uh, that we'll be covering your profile today. Um, unfortunately, we aren't going to have time to get to um, all of the different search techniques. Um, so we can always do another follow up session at that point, but um, it will be a pretty solid uh, 45 minutes of just going through all the best practices with LinkedIn. Um, I actually had a client just yesterday who was like at the end of working on her profile I was like, oh, I'm at All Star. So hopefully we'll be able to get all of you guys to that point as well. Um, so yeah, here are some of our um, goals and objectives for today. Um, so helping you with um, when you are reaching out, uh, whether that is for networking, for informational interviews, um, or to find an um, internal referral at a company, or just to do business development in your current job, you're getting more responses and you're getting more outreaches too from recruiters and executive search. Okay, so let's... Uh, and here's everything that we'll be covering today. Um, if you haven't already, add yourself to the networking Google Doc. Um, I think Gloria will be um, pasting that into the chat feature if you didn't get that in the email already. Um, it looked like uh, quite a few of you have already been populating it, which is great. Uh, we want to utilize that for everyone in this session to be able to reach out to each other. And also, if you see somebody on that list um, is working at your dream company or in the industry that you want to switch into, um, you know, absolutely utilize the strength of the uh, Bruin network and reach out to them. Uh, for the rest of the session, we're going to be going through how to optimize your profile. Um, so you're coming up in more searches um, and getting responses, um, how to really tackle those role descriptions, um, and then embedding media so you re look really tech savvy. And um, there's a lot of creativity and branding that goes into this that makes it a lot of fun. Um, and then we'll talk about skills and recommendations. And, um, and then we'll do a profile review of one of you, um, whoever uh, wants, whomever wants to volunteer. Um, so as Gloria mentioned, um, I um, am a UCLA Anderson alum. I graduated in 2008. Um, and then I came back after working for a high growth startup and um, they um, tasked me with teaching a career course, a six month career course um, to, and during the six and a half years I was there, I taught 2,500 MBAs and was really proud that we got the career center to be the top ranked career center amongst the top 20 business schools. Um, so we'll be sharing a lot of the best practices that we went over with the MBAs there. Um, and then for the last um, you know, two, two and a half years, I had my own business. Um, I launched Next Step Careers. We have, especially thanks to the pandemic, um, clients, I think in 26, 27 states and six different countries. So it's uh, been great to, and quite a few of them, of course, UCLA um, alums. Uh, and then my other claim to fame in terms of LinkedIn was that I did teach some of the um, the writers from the show The Office, uh, which I guess has been trending even more during COVID days uh, about LinkedIn because so many of them had never worked in a LinkedIn or in an actual office before and wanted to know all about LinkedIn profiles. 
Um, and speaking of uh, Hollywood um, and LinkedIn, um, if you haven't ever seen Conan O'Brien's profile, I recommend checking it out. Um, a few years ago, he decided that uh, since the Kardashians had capitalized or basically had dominated most uh, social media platforms, that he was going to conquer LinkedIn. Um, so this is uh, an old version of uh, Conan O'Brien's um, LinkedIn profile. This version just happens to show up a little bit better on a PowerPoint slide. Um, so you can see too, he actually uh, um, shows a, you know, a temporary demotion um, on his profile, has some very interesting test scores included um, in coursework. And um, then, uh, yeah, I just love the skills he has included, the you know, pretending to listen and blaming my father were always my favorite. Okay, so uh, enough of talking about celebrities. Um, for your LinkedIn profile, how is it going to get viewed? Um, so your, um, when recruiters are coming onto your profile, they're gonna do a scan somewhat similar to your um, resume, but it's gonna be even faster. Everybody looks at profiles even faster unless they really wanna dig in. Um, so, you know, a really common thing, yeah, they're gonna check out your photo. People spend a lot of time, 14 uh, uh, times more likely to get a profile of you if you have a photo. Most people do these days, so kind of a non-issue. Um, and then they are going to uh, be looking to at shared commonality. Do we have any connections in common? This validates you more. I could possibly reach out to that person and be like, oh, how's Joe Bruin like to work with? You know, how do you know them? Um, and then, um, yeah, you can see some of the um, other attributes too that are scanned. Okay, so um, if uh, for profile viewing options, um, you know, some people have their set to private, so nobody sees if they come onto their profile um, to view and they want to have it be their way, and other people have it completely open. Um, for those settings, I recommend um, that you actually have view full, that they can see your full profile, or at least most of the sections. So in private mode, yeah, you can be stealth, but if you are conducting research, let's say before an informational or before an interview, it actually serves you well. Like uh, recru uh, recruiters and interviewers and hiring managers, they like to see that you've been doing your research. I mean, don't go on like, you know, every day and like every hour to look at their profile. If you actually feel like you're gonna to need to look at their profile that much, there's an easy way to set, save their profile as a PDF. I can actually show you how to do that. Um, but, um, you know, so yeah, I would recommend having some portion of your profile shared. There's actually sales software now that will go and look at lots and lots of profiles on your behalf because they found it such a great sales generation lead uh, activity. Um, because what happens when you've seen somebody's like with an interesting tagline or uh, company uh, has viewed your profile? Like, it's kind of in our nature, right, to click through and see, like, who was this person that um, looked at our profile? And a lot of times this engenders um, interaction. So, yeah, long story, make it full pro profile or uh, somewhere close if you, as long as you feel comfortable with it. Um, and yes, of course, this is a, you know, viewing option that we all get and, of course, want to click through and uh, check out each individual. Um, and here's, you know, you can see too that you could always include everything except like, you know, the um, details for the roles if you wanted to keep those, those private or just make sure that the content that you have out there you feel comfortable with. Um, okay, if you haven't done this already, make sure that you have indicated that you are open to work. You'll see in a couple slides from now that this really impacts the queue that you're in. Um, so that you are prioritized when recruiters are sifting through potential candidates um, and um, to include for, for outreach. Um, they've also just recently showed too that if you add the open to work um, logo to your um, photo, um, it's yeah dramatically higher the, um, the number of outreaches as well. So uh, if that's something that you've been uh, toying with, um, definitely um, add it. Okay, and then of course you can get more particular as well about um, what type of roles you would be open to. Um, you know, I am not, I'm very, I love my business. I am not searching, but I still have it in here, not just for the, the slide, just because, you know, it's always interesting to entertain new options, right? Um, and we should always be uh, networking and uh, thinking dynamically about our careers. 
Okay, so will my boss know um, that I've indicated that I am open to work? So this is the verbiage that LinkedIn has provided us. Um, so as long as you click only recruiters, they will make their very best effort to make sure that you do not come up in the search for your that your own company is conducting. You know, are they going to hundred percent guarantee that they can do it? No, but uh, you know, if, if your company is like kind of always checking for updates and things like that, it, uh, it's still it's pretty safe. Uh, I haven't had any clients that have had an issue with this uh, today. Um, when looking at your network tracking sheets, most of you guys have um, edited your public, uh, have edited your URLs. So, uh, and that's getting rid of all of the numbers and letters here. And I'll just quickly show you what I am talking about. Okay, so over on our network tracking sheet, oh, look at, this is great. We already have um, like at least 35 of you have updated your um, information on here. And so there's just a few people that have the additional numbers and letters on here. Um, and uh, like um, Jeanette, Yad, um, Kay, uh, what you guys can do, Megan, um, it's really fast and um, very helpful. Uh, so let me show you what I'm talking about. The rest of you can just, you know, check on your privacy settings while I walk them through this. Um, so if you go up to the top corner, the edit public profile and URL, um, after, you know, then you click in to edit and then you get rid of all those numbers and letters. If you haven't already, take that URL and put it at the top of your um, uh, resume so that you can, um, if anybody's um, a hiring manager wants to be able to find you before interviewing, it makes it really easy. Um, I also recommend putting it in your email signature, either the, um, the URL entirely, or you can write LinkedIn and hyperlink it. Um, you know, by having this personal URL, you're also going to come up higher in search. So we're going to do a lot of things to just improve your own personal SEO. Um, oh, and there's a question from Judy about will this presentation become available after the meeting? Um, I believe so. And I can always send out the deck. It's about 61 slides. So I send it out as a PDF so you, I don't destroy your email box uh, or we can do a hyperlink. Okay. Okay, so as promised, um, the recruiter view and why it's important to indicate that you are open to new opportunities. So if um, they were searching people that have been at Nike that have experience with brand marketing, um, this is, they would have over 120,000 candidates that would possibly come up, but look, only 6,000 at the time of the screenshot actually had indicated they were open to new opportunities. So make sure you do it. Um, the next thing I wanna point out is that they have company connections. So they're connected to somebody at that firm doing the search. So even more reason to make sure that you've connected with your um, UCLA uh, you know, friends and classmates, maybe people you haven't like, you know, necessarily talked to that recently, but going, like I always used to recommend, like if you're like binge watching something on Netflix, just, um, you know, sit there on your computer and just send, um, you know, connect, um, you know, go to the UCLA page, uh, UCLA alumni page, go to people, and you can even search for your class year and just start finding the individuals you went to, to school with. And uh, make sure too to send like a one line email uh, or one line note, a personal note in there. You're much more likely to get a response, like, you know, unless they're your roommate, you know, if it's something comes out of the blue, um, it's, you're much more likely to get a response if uh, there's that personal note. Um, okay. And then the next thing I want to point out is keywords, right? The most heavily weighted section is your title in the header. And I'll show you some examples of optimized um, titles in the header. And then the titles of your roles, both your current and your previous. Um, so, um, you know, people that just have kind of more vague, like, you know, I like to see the white space and find new solutions, like as their header, those people are not optimizing their profiles whatsoever, right? We wanna make sure we get key terms in that header and those job titles. 
Okay, so most people have something like Jess Robson here. Uh, she's uh, most examples I'm going to use here are UCLA alums. Few of them um, went to other schools, but or clients of of mine um, that uh, really illustrate the concept well. But um, yeah, so you know if there's somebody here too that you're like, oh my gosh, like their career sounds amazing. Um, you know, feel free to like look them up and um, you know and reach out to connect. Um, once again, we're trying to capitalize on that Bruin network. Um, um, so Jess Robson, um, you know, you can see her, uh, Robin Hood obviously uh, has gotten a lot of uh, uh, press and uh, in the last few weeks uh, with GameStop, but um, you know, she's, uh, she's included her title here in the header, very traditional way of approaching it. Um, and so then if we want to uh, start adding more key terms to our header, what we can do, you see here with Rich Avery, um, he's, uh, he do, does the company he's in um, real estate construction, like they do um, like grids and things like that. It's not as, as known of a company um, outside of the space that he's in. So that's why he has more of a functional title here. Senior project manager, you could probably add something more about the industry. Um, and then, um, you know, of course, UCLA Anderson candidate. So any of you, we saw a few people who are current students, you know, feel free to add, um, you know, that graduation year there. Um, and then here's an example of, um, you know, really where I want to get people to uh, on this session, right? So you can have something that's more of the key term, um, like, you know, your key title, if you want. Um, this guy's actually a COO. So he actually should probably have, uh, or he's now chief administrative officer, that's right. Um, and then functional strength um, right here in between the pipes. And then after this, he includes former Landmark Health and McKinsey Associate Partner. So, you know, especially if you've worked for companies that have large like, numbers of employees and alumni networks, include them in your header, right? So you can always have your current title. So Jess Robson actually would have been well served, I should ping her, um, to have her recruiting operations manager at Robinhood pipe and then um, she had been a consultant a consultant prior to this like mentioning like former um uh, uh AT, AT Kearney, um consultant okay next let's talk about um photos and background uh, images if you can have a photo like obviously you know professional headshot great um, as long as you know you've got um you look approachable and professional, wonderful. Um, you know, especially with the quality of iPhones and other ca uh, camera phones, you know, you can get a pretty simple background, use portrait mode, have a roommate or a significant other, uh, take a bunch of, of photos. Um, no need to have to pay for a professional headshot, especially since the thumbnail is so small. Um, the other thing is if you can get a photo where you are doing something that relates to your job, like in this example here, it's a presenting photo, right? Really captures the energy. Um, then that can be very helpful with generating even more clicks into your profile. Okay, now background photos. Uh, I think that this is a great way of enhancing the branding of your page. So. I used to recommend going one or two directions. First, a functional or industry photo um, that really captures either um, what you're currently working in or where you want to go. The second can be geographic uh, because you're really set in about staying in a certain geography, a certain city. Um, or actually a third, I take that out, third. Um, if you're a current student, uh, whether undergrad, graduate, uh, feel free to use that UCLA, uh, like some image from campus or something like that and show your school pride. Um, so let's uh, go through a few of these. Uh, Aaron up here was targeting, um, you know, obviously, jobs in tech and innovation ended up at Facebook. Um, you know, so the, uh, kind of the whiteboarding image. I had another client where we just found an image of just um, post-its all over a wall. Um, if I had another client who actually whiteboarded it themselves, um, which looked really awesome. Um, and was able to target to their particular industry. Um, Ankit uh, is at uh, YouTube now. Um, he took a picture of his desk. I thought that was a really interesting, um, great idea. Um, Deb Dab um, was very set on staying in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area um, in health tech. Um, and so, you know, we can see that Golden Gate Bridge in the background have 
you know, plenty of other Bay Area clients, whether it's like the Ferry Building, LA clients, you know, Silicon Beach. If you just go into Google Images too on any of these things, type in key terms and then see what you come up with. Um, if you're into real estate, you know, having those skylines. So I had one guy who uh, was in um, real estate development and uh, while he was at UCLA, we had um, a, a um, crane at UCLA that was doing like construction that really captured it well. Um, so, you know, yeah, and it can be a photo that you've taken or that you get off Google images. You're not selling anything. So that's, you know, why there's a little bit more leniency with grabbing photos off of the internet. Um, and then you can see here, Cassandra's set on staying in um, the uh, nonprofit space. And so um, that photo is of um, work that she has done in um, the space. So hopefully you're brainstorming ideas right now of something um, industry or function. So your entertainment, perhaps it's a Hollywood sign um, or a, a the theatrical stage or a movie premiere. If it's, um, you know, a, if you're interested in uh, retail, you know, a rack of clothes or anything like that. Um, and, uh, and then Hal's question is uh, about the recording being available, I believe so. Um, so, um, Gloria, do you happen to know, will the recording be available? Yes, we'll have it available when it's Perfect. Ready. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, to, and then here's a gr another great example of a background um, photo. I thought this one was great. Um, Neil is an Anderson uh, or UCLA um, Anderson alum um, and um, you know, works at Google on analytics, right? And just typing in that key term on Google, I thought was a, a brilliant idea. Okay. Um, and then you can always make your own background photo. Uh, I thought that, uh, you know, Erica uh, was um, trying to make the transition into entertainment marketing. And so she created this collage of all of her favorite uh, movie and TV posters. Um, and I thought that gave like a really unique feel to it. Um, okay. Um, ooh, okay. I love these ideas too, um, um, of some ideas to be using, um, for that. That's great. Um, okay. Yeah. And, you know, great thing too, to brainstorm with other people in this session as, as well. Right. Um, right. Okay. Um, um, okay, so after you've done, you've done your header at the top, you've gotten that background photo, um, and you, you've double checked to your profile picture, you know, just um, asking to uh, some friends or colleagues, like, if it gives off the vibe that you're looking for too, right, making sure that it's matched for the, the industry that you're in, um, whether you need to be like in a suit or just, you know, a, a nice top um, can, can very much vary. Okay, so now we're into the about section. Um, so this is a longer one. Um, it does not need to be this long. Um, so for those of you that are more senior in your careers, if you have a summary at the top of your resume, you can transpose that over to LinkedIn, um, especially if you've um, had numerous roles, numerous companies to um, get that, um, give that sense of your career progression. Um, ways, if it feels awkward to be talking about yourself, um, what you can do is, uh, I always ask clients like, you know, like, what are you most proud of, right? What sets you apart from other people in your role or at your company? Um, and the, the pride thing often gen generates really great stories or verbiage. Um, and we see that at the bottom too, on this woman, Emily's, um, the specialties portion. So feel free to put that at the bottom of your um, about section. Um, usually you have to click in to see that anyway, so it doesn't kind of muddy the look and just feel of your, your profile, but it also helps with the weighting. You'll add these key terms to your skill section anyway, but just having them up in the about section helps. Um, here's a shorter, uh, more approachable perhaps. Um, and um, um, for you see with Daniela, um, she, uh, she's a uh, Berkeley alum, but her, uh, both her parents teach at UCLA. So we give her, uh, you know, partial credit. Uh, but um, what I really like with Daniela's profile is, you know, you get a sense of um, some of her energy in that first uh, paragraph and what sets her apart. And then very quickly in that second paragraph, she gives us, um, you know, how she gains skill sets at the various roles. 
um, and you know she successfully um, transitioned to um, Waymo after Airbnb had some consolidation during COVID. Um, she's fantastic. Um, okay. Um, and then, um, as I was mentioning too, with um, you know two slides ago about putting those um, areas of expertise or those skill sets, um, if you happen to do a lot of projects, like Brad here, his um, client of mine, um, he is a um, he writes like basically the scripts and storylines for uh, video games um, so, as a creative director. So uh, he includes like all the projects. Um, down below and um, you know integrated those into the rest of it but this was a, a nice synopsis here so if you've been doing a lot of consulting work um, you know this could be a, a place to put those okay um, and um, if you really want to if you have a um, design eye um, and are feeling creative you can be like Michael he's a UCLA Anderson alum um, and he captured his work history on a timeline um, and um, that is in his featured section actually I should have uh, need to update this featured section got rolled out about a year ago I know there are some questions about it and we will uh, you know um, have some some ideas to help you generate ideas of how to take the take advantage of it um, but yeah I thought this might spark some ideas here um, and actually for the one who's asking about if you have uh, pals asking about uh, years of experience if you're running 15 plus um, so you know you're seeing um, you know, it kind of depends on the industry. And some people in tech get very worried about ageism. Um, you know, it's like <laughs> the beginning of your career, you're like, oh, I don't feel like I have enough experience. And then you cross over this threshold and you're worried about like, uh, are people going to think I'm not relevant enough? Um, especially this happens, um, this concern at least in the, the tech space. Um, so if you're facing that, which we see here, uh, Michael's uh, 15 plus years. And uh, what I think you get with this is, um, you know, how dynamic his career has been um, and how um, he's uh, in a sense of accomplishment, right? So if you can be showing that you've had a bunch of different roles, you've tackled new initiatives, like all of those things uh, make you appealing. Um, and especially if you've moved to some different companies, like even though Google was his summer internship, right? Um, uh, you never want to take off any of those big um uh, companies that are going to help drive um, and get you in more search uh, fields. Okay. Um, okay, so that featured section that I was mentioning. Um, so uh, here is an example. Um, this got, yeah, as mentioned, it got a little about a year ago. Um, you have to actually add it to your profile. At the very top, it's like add a profile section. And um, it gives you the option of pinning previous um, uh, LinkedIn profile posts that you've done. Um, so you can see uh, which ones um, that you've posted in the past and, and think about pinning those, if those are things that you're really proud of and like help with your personal brand. Um, and then uh, perhaps you're somebody who's never posted to LinkedIn, don't worry. Um, what you can do here is, uh, and what I did with Nathan is um, actually as we were, <laughs> he collected some images when he was trying to figure out his background photo. And we took some of those and uh, put them in the featured, right? Because you can upload an image. And so with this, he just included accomplished journalist and then had like two sentences after it. Um, very rarely do people actually click into it. It's more that um, it takes up a decent amount of real estate on your profile. Um, it can really like highlight um, skill sets if done um, nicely. Um, and um, Okay, so and here's another one. Samuel um, was, um, he, he runs a social enterprise. Uh, it's a startup. And so what he did is he took content from their pitch deck. Um, you can also go on to the company that you work for, onto press releases or other images that they have on their website. Once again, go back into Google Images, go into Google News, just see what comes up and let, um, and you kind of have to play around a little bit with dimensions. Once you have, um, more than two, most of them tend to be kind of like a square shape almost. Uh, so just figuring out what's going to look best for that. So you can see he pinned one of his previous posts um, and then uploaded those two images. 
Um, and, um, you know, if you do include a link to a website, sometimes you have to see what image they end up pulling. And if you like it, my hack, if you don't like it, is just go take a screenshot of that page or that image, upload it, and include the link to that website in the description section. Um, so I'm just going to walk you quickly through how to do the, the featured section. This is on my own page. Um, so you can see I've pinned some posts um, from the past. Um, and um, then, yes, yeah, so you're just going to go, you can either create a new one or you can add a previous one. Um, so yeah, it's really easy to either do links or media. Um, you can write articles and pin them here. Um, I think that's, you know, unless you already have a blog somewhere else. Okay, um, any questions on any of this before we move uh, right along? Um, okay. Um, oh, uh, okay, so there's a question about um, whether or not to, um, on the personal ID for use for your email. Um, so he, um, Today is um, still using a Yahoo email account. Um, and I mean, feel free to chime in. To, uh, he's put himself out there here uh, in this comfortable safe zone. Um, how many of you would judge him for his Yahoo uh, email account? And maybe this, we should like create a poll. Um, and uh, we, we need some voting. Um, uh, oh, sorry, he didn't actually, he wrote to the panelists. I'm sorry, I totally. <laughs> Sent to the whole group. Um, so uh, I would say, like, yeah, I tend not to. Uh, when, uh, okay. Uh, thanks for forgiving me. <laughs> uh, um, so, you know, if you're feeling at all, can, it kind of it kind of depends to what industry you're um, uh, going after, like what uh, type of roles. Uh, <laughs> I would judge Yahoo and AL accounts. Uh, Lauren, thank you for your honesty. Um, we, we appreciate it. So, you know, I think what I would do just in case, um, because you never know um, who's going to be reading this, right? So, and you know, and that's the hard part about the hiring process, right? Is people make snap judgments. Um, so what about if you created a Gmail or some other platform and you just forwarded your Yahoo account to that? So you could, or forward the Gmail, yeah, you could just forward the Gmail account to the Yahoo account, right? And then you could list the Gmail account on um, LinkedIn or on Resume not have to worry about any of this or utilize your UCLA account, right? So, um, okay, Diego's throwing Hotmail under the bus too. Uh, this is good. This is what we need on a Friday. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I would do. I'd utilize UCLA accounts like are great for any of the um, recruiting materials. Um, Okay, and Jay, hopefully you have a, um, you, we can all chuckle about this. Um, okay, so William's asking, would it be appropriate to highlight an award in the featured section? I was thinking about a photo of me receiving an award. Absolutely, that's so perfect. Um, let me share with you. I love, love, love that idea. Um, let me show you one person, by the way. Ooh, loving this. We almost have 50 people on there. That's more lengthy. Um, about section that I was sh showed you previously. Um, I'm just feeling maybe this would give you some ideas too, right? Like I think that's a fabulous thing to have in the featured section. Um, and then just be thinking about what key terms do you want? So you'll see with both um, this one and some of the other examples that I was showing you, I like to have one line um, titles on them. I think it's really easy and quick to read. Um, and then think about what key terms you want on there, what kind of jargon for the field or the role that you're going for that you want to have highlighted. Okay, excellent question. Um, uh, okay, um, one, um, and going back to the um, email question saying um, that they definitely see non-Gmail emails being um, judged in tech. Um, okay. Um, so, um, and then, um, yes, to the question about, um, 
uh, ageism. Uh, you're going to have to let me know how far back you want to go. Uh, as long as it's, I mean, I've just recently worked with a 79 year old on his LinkedIn profile. Um, so, um, you know, it's uh, more of if you've got interesting stuff from the beginning, then uh, by all means, you should be including it. Um, there's people that, you know, leave off graduation dates um, after they've had more than 20 years of work experience or so. Um, but it's uh, kind of a case by case scenario. Uh, we may need to talk offline about that. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's head on back to the deck unless there's more, more questions. Um, okay. Oops. But these are all great. Um, okay. So, um, companies. Um, so um, you may see on your profile, I, I see this a fair amount. Um, so I was doing a session two with the uh, Stanford alumni group and actually one of the chapter presidents. Uh, um, we didn't see the um, logo for the company that he was working with. So, um, you know, if it's not showing, well, first of all, I don't think it looks as good. Um, second, um, you know, sometimes you're not getting pulled into that alumni network or that search as much for the, the company name. Um, so with this one, um, this is a, um, this was, you know, an Anderson alum, and we were looking at, because uh, both these are kind of known names in the, um, uh, it, down here in uh, Southern California. Uh, Pritzker Group is a, you know, great VC firm, um, but it turns out their company page is actually Actually slightly different. So if it's not, if you're having this on your page where you don't see a logo, um, type in different variants or see what um, into just the search bar at the top and see what it actually comes up with. Because I think it ended up being like, you know, just Pritz, the Pritzker group or like something like that. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, then um, the logo um, pulled and he was coming up in more search. And then also double check for um, typos. Um, this one just happened to be, you know, as you may have noticed, an E was missing in Los Angeles. So uh, it wasn't connecting on that as well. So um, I've even seen people sometimes on the universities, uh, you know, um, sometimes too with UCLA and the different um, graduate schools or things like that. Um, if for some reason it's a small graduate program and it's not pulling up, I would just use UCLA at large. It would be in the education section, of course, or if you were doing a researcher role. Um, okay, so for some of you, you may have been doing some consulting or started your own company. So in that case, then, right, you don't necessarily have a, um, a one of those logo or company pages to link to. Uh, so, but it's still really easy to create your own company page. You can do it in like five minutes. Um, you mostly just need a logo, but as you can see, it doesn't have to be complicated. And actually the thumbnail is small. So I recommend not having a complicated logo. Uh, I've made some clients, their company uh, logos for their pages, like just in uh, PowerPoint and just like taken a screenshot and saved it and they uploaded it to a page and then linked down to it. Um, so you can see this is a um, UCLA alum. Um, she's uh, created her own page for her consulting firm. Um, and then um, there's also, if you've been doing some independent consulting, you can write independent consultant as the job and it pulls this like networky logo. Um, so um, yeah, and this woman's also a UCLA alum. Uh, she's probably, uh, you know, 25, 30 years uh, work experience there. Um, and she's been doing this obviously for the last decade um, extremely well. And she's listed those client names in the section. Um, Okay, so then we go into the role descriptions. So, so many of you have spent a really long time on your resume, right? Um, perfecting every bullet. So the temptation is usually to paste those bullets in the role description sections. However, they're not that exciting to read, especially like if you're on mobile or on uh, even on desktop, right? Like how excited are you to read these bullets here? Like, I'm not. Um, so people get very ADD-ish when looking at uh, LinkedIn profiles. So the best practice with um, LinkedIn is to be this first person narrative, just like you were talking to the person. So if you happen to have written out your walk me through your resume or tell me about yourself, right, that question that you usually get at the beginning of every interview, you can just 
just take those portions of how you've spoken about the roles and paste those into each one of these, right? Because that's the vibe that you want to have. You might call it like one um, accomplishment or so and some other key um, skills that you demonstrated. The thing I like to usually do with clients is typically take the first two bullets because those are the ones you're most proud of and turn those into the way you actually speak. You know, cut out any numbers you don't feel comfortable being on the internet. Um, and yeah, just make it much more conversational. Um, so here's some examples. Um, Sandra is a uh, Bruin. I actually hired her uh, when I, um, straight out of undergrad. Best uh, hiring decision I've ever made. She's absolutely incredible. Um, so she has been, um, uh, she was there for about two and a half years and then she's been crushing it at Hulu. Um, and if you don't know her, she's just, uh, yeah, she's just a star. Um, so you can see on her role here, like how she's spoken about what she's accomplished while she's been there, right? We see the word I, which we don't typically use in a resume, right? Um, but it makes it much more, you can almost hear Sandra talking to you. Oops. Um, Joey um, is a um, Anderson alum um, who I worked with and she had a, uh, she's been in the gaming industry. She uh, spent, she came from the military, spent her um, MBA summer at um, uh, Microsoft and then has been in gaming ever since. And sharing with these two, because I know some of you are uh, towards the beginning of your careers and just thinking about how dynamic a career can be and the different directions that they, uh, that you can go in both to build skills and also as you develop, um, you know, a, a greater clarity of where you want to be. Um, so Joey here was told by a recruiter that um, this was the best LinkedIn profile that uh, this recruiter had ever seen. And you see, it's very lean right? Uh, it's basically like a sentence or two for each role. And she's done a fantastic job embedding um, uh, media and being um, very uh, particular about how she um, edited the titles. So most people don't know this, like, and we'll talk about this with embedding uh, media is that you can um, edit these. So um, they really pop. Um, Mesa is also a um, UCLA alum, um, and um, she is now a um, marketing lead at Thrive Cosmetics. If any of you are uh, familiar, they've got amazing mascara. Um, and uh, but she started her um, experience, uh, her work experience on the agency side. And then she recently um, switched over to brand management. So if you're thinking about that marketing might be for you, um, here's a, a possible path. But what I wanted to highlight here um, is that uh, while she's been at the agency, she's worked with so many great brands, right? And making sure that if you have done that, you include it in the role descriptions and even in the embedded media, because that's going to get you more um, appear higher in search, right? Because if somebody is searching for Amazon or Nestle or like Universal, you'll she'll still be popping up. Um, so, and then, you know, I was mentioning this before, like people um, are looking on mobile, right? Uh, so actually 60% are looking at your profile on mobile. Uh, so it's even more reason to make it um, easy to read um, and not that long. Of course, you have to click into role descriptions, but still, you know, you, no need to make them like several paragraphs. Okay, this embedded media I've been talking so much about. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's such a fun way to distinguish your profile. So Clay, um, as you can see, Anderson alum, uh, he was uh, also worked on the agency side, but decided he wanted to be in gaming um, uh, or entertainment. He wasn't quite sure while he was in uh, business school and um, had experiences in both. So look at that with the Warner Brothers, uh, the Warner Bros section. Um, so we didn't really, we, there was one good article out there. It doesn't have to mention you at all. It can just be work that you were working on. So once again, these are like great things to check on the press releases and Google News. Um, so he put in, he embedded that um, like about Harry Potter. He was working on the brand Bible. Um, and then I love this title for it, the experiential marketing and Gen Z, right? Two great terms that people are looking for. Um, we didn't love the other images that came up with the articles out there. So, you know, we just found this one with Lego and Harry Potter um, and use that. Um, you can, uh, so you, know, you can just play around. And sometimes it just takes uploading it, seeing how it appears and then trying something else out. Um, but yeah, once again, like, like wonderful use of jargon throughout these. 
Um, so if you've never done this uh, before, it's um, pretty straightforward. You go into that edit um, button and then you go to upload. You can either pr press in a link or you can upload an image, right? So you can um, put in the image and then you hit that button, uh, that edit button and you can edit the title and you can put in text. Any of that text or those titles are searchable. Um, Anna is a UCLA alum. Uh, I just, she has one of my favorite LinkedIn profiles uh, of all the people I've ever worked with. I, I love this one, partially because she was a food editor at Pop Sugar. Um, and so the imagery she has is just so fantastic. Um, so, uh, and then she was at Britain Co and then did her own consulting and now works for, uh, she wanted to switch into product marketing. Um, so what you see with her profile, right, is once again, key terms here. You know, this is a recipe for a chocolate, gluten-free chocolate chip, uh, <laughs> gluten-free chocolate chip cookie recipe, but she still made it SEO driven recipes. Um, yeah, if you need any best practices, like, and you're trying to synthesize this uh, presentation, head to, to Anna's uh, uh, profile. Okay, and then um, there was the question about including a picture from an award, um, you know, it, whether it goes in the featured section or in the role, probably the featured section is great. Um, this was actually um, Melody um, did this before um, the feature section was created, um, but just having that celebrating a strong end of year, had clients where they were there for the um, IPO, uh, like at the stock exchange, so having photos from that is wonderful. But, you know, having pictures um, with other people, especially pre-pandemic, hopefully soon again, right? Uh, with coworkers, it shows that you get along well with people. Um, perhaps it's um, a photo with clients is great too. Um, any of those things are, are wonderful to include on this. Okay. Um, okay, we've got a few questions. Um, um, okay, so... Um, 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 okay, so one person was wondering about if you can expand your LinkedIn profile if you don't have much experience, especially at any well-known companies. Okay, I'm going to show you an example uh, for those of you who are earlier in your careers. It's a great, great question. Okay, um, here's a client of mine. Um, you know, this is actually the one who made it to All Star yesterday, so it's a little bit of recency effect. She graduated um, in 2020, um, and she's trying to make a switch. So uh, she had worked at an art studio. They did not have a page. She's offering to make um, a page for the um, owner of the studio. Um, but you still see like how she's you know for four years of working at this art studio, mostly it's her summer camps. Like she's added content here right? Um, she just started an Etsy page uh, because she's been doing some um, art and design work. And so this one's actually been great. She was always like, you know, having friends tell her that or like and her dad to say like, oh, you should do this, but like kind of pushed her over the edge to do this. And because of the Etsy one, we're able to talk about AB testing, right? As you can see this about new product lines, you know, how she's marketing it, um, you know, her title on her um, uh, resume is about, um, uh, oh, what was it? Founder and... Um, head of uh, marketing or something like that. So there's ways of playing around with it. Um, and then um, she's also taken on a um, kind of a post-grad internship uh, with a small EV company, right? And so here we've got that they're working with these different, um, you know, she's researching competitors. So, you know, she has like less than a year of professional work experience, right? But there's a lot that you can still play up, um, especially if you go into job descriptions, um, for roles that you are looking for and think about like, okay, I want this job. They're wanting me to have these skill sets. How do I gain those either by, you know, starting my own thing um, or working for somebody else, maybe very cheaply or doing a side project or side hustle. Um, and um, so another person is asking, um, about if you've only worked at one place. So if you've only worked at one place, you can still have all of the promotions that are going on, right? So this one that I was showing you, uh, she had worked for 17 years for, at the Hyatt. It was different properties, but you'll see this one, there was a promotion. You can still show your promotions. 
um, and talk about different projects that you did at each one, right? Um, Sandra, who was talking, oops, I didn't have her profile up. Let me see, Sandra. Um, Sandra, who's been at Hulu, right? You're, she's still talking about the different roles. She could do even more with embedded media. Um, she's obviously not searching. Um, so there's still a lot of opportunity to talk about like a, a interesting thing that you tackled in each role um, or uh, it, yeah, I'm assuming that you haven't been in the same job for the entire time. Um, so, um, oh, um, is it recommended to update job role title after getting promoted, um, going up in job grades? So yes, you would update, but you would still keep the previous role. You could keep those dates. Um, so you would like, you know, we're seeing here that she has a total of three roles during that time. So it's good to be able to see and, and that you've had promotions. Um, and, um, um, okay, so finance. Um, great question, Ben, about um, what to do if you work in finance um, in terms of um, profiles. Um, John Paul. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, somehow I am <laughs> accidentally <laughs> logged in as my um, daughter right now on my profile. It's kind of funny. Um, okay. Um, Let's see here. I realized I hadn't checked her LinkedIn profile in a while. She's three. Um, okay, so um, with John's profile right here, um, you'll notice um, that he's still having stuff about like, yes, is it the most like, you know, it's not going to be as beautiful as the, you know, food blogger, right? Um, but there's still stuff about um, like kind of strategic launches of stuff, um, you know, like can still be press releases. I mean, this is about the IPO press release when he was an accountant. Um, this is him still with like in a leadership training program there. Um, this was, um, you know, so he still has embedded um, things uh, that have, have occurred. Um, so, cause your work is still absolutely essential to to the company. Um, so, um, you know, and it can even be like, even if you don't feel like you work directly on something, it's still a shared success. Um, so I have um, another client who is, um, she um, is, um, you know, a senior in, at Notre Dame and she's been one of the football managers. So she's still including something about Notre Dame um, going to the, the Rose Bowl because like her efforts with the recruiting team helped recruit this class that, you know, did exceptional. So you can still include things like if your company launched yeah, a new product or if there was an acquisition or something like that. Um, I have clients that are investment bankers where like, yeah, if they've worked on a deal, right, they like um, eventually like once it's public, they include that. Um, okay, so um, and okay, there's another um, um one um, about um, like with privacy on LinkedIn, if you're like email share there, you know, I have 5,000, almost 5,000 connections on LinkedIn and um, I have my emails available to anybody who I connect with. Um, I've never had any issue with anything like unsolicited or anything like that, at least that I know of. Um, yes. And so by the way, yeah, if my, um, of course I've made my daughter's LinkedIn profile, but you know, um, if she can, uh, reach, you know, all-star um, all status. I know all of you guys can. Um, so, you know, there's a, uh, yeah. It, yeah, if you're feeling like you don't have a lot of work experience, um, granted she did get to have a brief stint um, working at Tom's, uh, but uh, you can always, you know, uh, spin any um, amount of work experience. Um, yeah, I was like trying to come up with uh, uh, results about her in the womb. I, I only made this because my uh, Anderson students were uh, thinking that it would be um, would be comical. Um, okay, sorry, I don't know why. For some reason, this is acting out. Um, all right, hold on one. Gloria, I might need help. Uh, <laughs> I think it's all the chats and Q&A uh, features. Okay, here we go. Hopefully this is, okay, there we go. Okay, resuming. So here are the skills that were most searched in 2020. Um, so if you have these skills, add them to your resume. 
if you're like, oh my gosh, blockchain was the number one skill, but I don't have it. And if it's not relevant to the jobs that you're targeting, don't worry about it. Um, okay. But any of the other ones, especially some of the soft skills, I bet you have, and um, you can add those to the skills section. Um, um, okay, so and then in terms of other skills to be adding to your profile, um, if you go on a job posting, I had, for a while I had quite a few clients that were interested in Goop, uh, and like these postings would get like, you know, up to a thousand applicants, it was crazy, like so many people wanted to work with Glenis Paltrow, uh, but anyway, if you go on a job posting and you see like, oh, I have four out of the 10 skills, but I don't have these skills in my profile, but I actually happen to have those, go back and add those to your profile. Um, this is a new thing that they're test piloting. You can check this out, linkedin.github.io slash um, career dash explorer. Um, I don't know if you need the rest or not, um, slash pound explorer. Uh, and you type in a job, um, like a job title that you would be interested in a location, and they will tell you the skills that have been, um, uh, um, that are being searched for, for that. Um, Okay, um, next is um, a, um, uh, um, it, you can also go on to find people too that like you would like to have their career, right? See what skills they have on their profile. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people do not have optimized LinkedIn profiles, which is actually, you know, good for you in a certain way, right? Uh, even more way to differentiate yourself. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you have to look a little bit to find um, people that have built out this section. You can have up to 50 skills in the skills section on LinkedIn. Average person they claim has 48. So if you are not like completely building out that section, that's like SEO that you're just like missing out on, right? Um, so, uh, and you can always delete these at any point in time. It doesn't cloud up your page too to have lots and lots, right? Because it just shows your top three. Um, so speaking of which, with your top three, um, that's the one thing I would um, make sure that you edit, that so make sure that it's most relevant to the roles that you're going for. I've had plenty of people where, like, you know, Spanish was at their top, but, you know, it happened to be that they, um, you know, a bunch of people just did endorsements. And yes, it's great that they're fluent in Spanish or bilingual, but it might not be the top skill that is relevant for their role that they're going for. Um, you know, where instead, you know, having business development or project management or something like that would be better to have in these top three. Um, so if you want to edit it, this one, this part on LinkedIn is not intuitive to me at all. I have lots of people that have like struggle with this. So that's why the, I have the screenshot. It may make sense to you. But if you come in to edit it, just unpin the ones that you don't want and then pin the ones that you do. Oh, thank you. Gloria just included the link to if you want to test out that GitHub. Um, yeah, I think that's a fun thing to play around with. Um, okay, uh, so we'll take a quick pause before we go into recommendations. Um, so there was a question about volunteer roles to support a career change. Absolutely, right? And if you've spent a ton of time in this volunteer role, you could also put in experience and then later move it down to volunteer, right? Um, there's no reason that it has to be down in the volunteer just because they didn't give you money. Um, so um, yeah, I love that. It's also um, with um, the volunteer section on LinkedIn, it's one that you have to add, uh, just like featured. It doesn't allow you to um, embed media on it. Um, like I have an, one client that did a bunch during college for Habitat for Humanity. And it'd be great to have an image of like building that house, right? Um, and she's got like images like that great team working, shows like civic involvement. Um, but if it's in the volunteer section, you can't embed media. So another reason to contemplate maybe putting it in the experience section. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, absolutely volunteer, great. Um, and then for those of us early on in our career, three to five years post-grad, how far back should we go listing previous positions, um, volunteer positions from undergrad? Okay, so like with those things too, if it gets to be like, you know, you held leadership roles at UCLA, which were great, but maybe like not as relevant now, or um, some people even have their high school in the experience section, or I'm sorry, the education section, which is fine. But for some of those leadership roles, at a certain point, I, you can just list them in UCLA, 
don't have them. They don't need to be necessarily the volunteer if you feel like it's kind of uh, making it too weighted and taking away from some of the other stuff. Um, and then, okay, we've got a, um, I found an old company's page, but it isn't showing up in the search bar when I try to include it in my experience. Is there any way to bypass that? If See if it's maybe spelled differently. Sometimes if companies go under, they no longer have a page, maybe they never made it to begin with, you can always offer to make it for them. Um, um, is all star status on LinkedIn what we're ultimately trying to reach? Um, I mean, this is the title of the uh, presentation. You don't have to aim to do that. Um, you know, like that um, uh, early um, early work professional that I was just showing you. Sorry, uh, <laughs> that's one of the LinkedIn profile numbers in the background. Um, you know, the joys of working at home, right? Um, so the um, your question about um, yeah, you know, you. Um, for, um, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, with, yeah, so the, the previous companies, um, I would, if words for the company that you're working at has received or only the words you specifically, absolutely can be uh, awards that your company has. Like if it's, um, yeah, that shared success, include that. Um, okay, we're gonna address the recommendation section. We're saying, yeah, include volunteer. Um, but yeah, in terms of going that far back for high school and college, um, yeah, I would just probably include it in the education section at a certain point. Um, okay, so, um, okay. Um, I am so, sorry, we are getting, uh, we are like already at one. I know we were gonna do a profile review. I'm gonna go really quick through the rest. Unfortunately, we won't be able to, because uh, of time constraints, um, dive into that. But um, yeah, here are uh, any of your other questions you can always reach, off, uh, reach out online, uh, offline. So for recommendations, um, yes, I highly recommend these. Uh, recruiters can view these even if they um, aren't connected to you. Um, so follow up with people who've written you letters of recommendation or if they sent you an email saying how great your work was um, and give them out to your coworkers and to your, um, maybe even people you've worked on class projects with. Um, and so here's some just uh, verbiage that you can use too when reaching out for those, um, just to make it really easy if you ask for something specific uh, for them to write so they don't go back and forth with it. Um, and then you ask for that. Um, and here's where you add that profile section, we chatted about that. You can easily add projects, even ones that you worked on while you were at UCLA, um, if you've been published at all. Um, education section too, if you've done certificates, especially during this COVID era where so many people are doing uh, upskilling at home, um, you can add too, if you've done classes, Kelly Cockrell is uh, um, at the part-time um, MBA, the uh, FEMBA program. She's wonderful. She um, And you can see how she, when she was uh, um, doing coursework at General Assembly, she included that. Uh, so normally we go, uh, I wish we had time to go through a profile, um, but want to quickly wrap up uh, to be sensitive to your time. Uh, the other question I usually get is LinkedIn premium worth it? Um, so there are a bunch of different search techniques. Um, and um, oh, now I remember, I was going to tell you the, um, the, early, the recent grad, she only had, I think like 94 connections and she still got to all-star, but it is just going to help with getting us uh, up. You know, it's great too if you can get to 500, but um, the, if you're at All-Star, you're still going to be generating more outreach and get more responses. Um, so yes, you, you can use that as a goal. So LinkedIn Premium, uh, if we end up doing um, another session to talk about different search techniques, there's a lot that you can do to bypass not needing to pay for LinkedIn Premium. If you ever view more than 100 profiles in a, um, a month, they will um, basically shut off your ability to view profiles. Um, and so if that happens to you, then take up their offer of one month free of LinkedIn Premium or 50% off. Um, and... Um, okay, so next steps, like obviously we covered a ton. Um, uh, Gloria um, is going to be sending out, or her team is going to be sending out the um, recording to this. Um, they can include the, the deck too, so you can look at a lot of these best practices and examples and update your profile. Um, definitely get on that Google Doc, connect with the other people, other um, attendees for this session. 
Um, I'm also offering 20 minute complimentary consults. Um, if you're looking at kind of diving deeper, as you know, some of you guys are in the middle of a job search. So if you want to, um, yeah, set one of those up, it's just um, bit.ly slash 20 min career consult. Um, and then um, in addition, uh, since I know like uh, so many of you are early in your career uh, and going through searches with COVID, wanted to offer um, something else that, um, for um, support. So this next week on both Tuesday, um, and Friday, I'll be offering two different uh, workshops so we can go and do personalized profile reviews of each person So um, in the group. So they'll be capped at eight people um, at the group um, and everybody's gonna get individual feedback, but you'll also learn from the other people in the group too. Um, so if you're interested in signing up, um, yeah, just head to this bit.ly slash UCLA LinkedIn small group. Oh, it should have an N. Um, and um, yeah, Gloria's put the right link um, in the chat. Um, and, oh, um, there's been a question about if you view too many profiles, will they, they shut down your access or your profile? What they'll do is they'll only let you see like two profiles, basically like almost ghost images. And they'll be like, you know, in order to view more, like sign up for LinkedIn premium. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, you know, I'll, uh, I can stay on for uh, another like minute or two to answer some more questions because uh, this has been such an engaged group, which is wonderful. Or you can just send, actually, why don't you just email them to me um, for the sake of time, just at emily at nextstepcareer.org. Or you can send them through LinkedIn too, if we've already connected, either way. Um, so it's been so great chatting with all of you. Thank you for all your questions. I'm looking forward to connecting with you on LinkedIn and seeing all the iterations of your profile. So Gloria, I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much, Emily. That was jam packed full of information, lots of uh, great practical tidbits and feedback. And you know, I know many of you, thank you for all your questions, for everyone sending questions, because we know that you're probably actively changing these things, wondering how you should make these changes or updates. And we are excited that today's uh, program at, you know, created a lot of questions in you because we have such a great expertise in Emily here today. Um, Emily is part of our Career Coaches Network where we vetted career coaches for our alumni uh, community. And if you're interested in working with Emily or other coaches, we have our website here that you can connect with them. And Emily has so generously given her time today, but you know, check out the small groups, check out the networking um, spreadsheet, to connect with your other Bruins um, because our Bruin network can be so powerful. And by tapping into it and connecting with each other, you only make it that much more powerful. So thank you everyone for your time today. We hope you learned a lot and we look forward to having you for future events. So have a great day, enjoy your weekend. Take care. <laughs>